Matthew Michaelwich is at the head of the class of a new breed of professional speakers. He's actually done what he talks about. Still in his mid-30s, he has retired after building four businesses and selling them at major profit. The latest of which grew to almost 200 employees and $20 million in revenue before being acquired by global giant Schneider Electric. I love the fact that I had Lech Valenza, President of Poland, on my board of directors, or Frank Abagnale, that Steven Spielberg made a movie about his life, Catch Me If You Can, or the fact that I've started four businesses, grown them, and sold them. I love that fact, but the most important thing out of all of those uh, experiences is that I bring the real world to your audience. That's the most important thing. I'm not telling you about things I saw in a movie, read in a book, my uncle told me, I'm telling you about what happened in the world with all of these colorful characters right there on stage to your customers, to the audience. That's the best part. I thought today he was brilliant. Entertaining, witty, charming, and the entrepreneurship was excellent. Born in Poland, raised and educated in the United States, Matthew and his wife chose to raise their young family and build a business from scratch in Adelaide, South Australia. We moved here by choice about nine years ago from the United States. Extremely excited. Love Australia. Love living in Adelaide. And I set up a business. I enter the business community for the first time. And I say, hey, how you doing? I'm Matt. I moved here from the United States. And they look at me. They hold my hand, but they just look at me. And they said, you moved here from where? And I said, the United States. You mean America? I said, yeah. Why? Why? And I was speechless, and I'm not often speechless, but I was absolutely speechless. And before I could even reply, they regained their composure, and then they looked at me, and this was the real, real killer. You'll never succeed here. You'll never, ever succeed here. The third fastest growing company in Australia last year was my company out of Adelaide. And it was started, built, and sold under the very noses of the people that said it was impossible. People need to hear Matthew's story, when he articulates his experience, the journey that he's been on, the learnings throughout that journey, it provides so much credibility in what he is saying and people pick up on that. And Matthew's inspirational presentations come from the world of facts, verifiable experiences and mainstream research. I don't like fluff. I don't like talks where um, the ad people advocate that the way to achieving something, whether in business careers or in any discipline, is through some fluffy method. Let's hold hands, let's close our eyes, let's hum, let's think about something and all of a sudden it materializes. I, I fundamentally don't believe in those kind of methods and I've yet to meet the business where the business owner gets his employees together every morning, holds their hands and says, right, Visualize the customer coming in through the door. Visualize it, visualize it. They're not coming in, Visual who does that? Nobody. So I believe in real methods, in things that are actually being done in the real world, methods that Jack Welsh advocates in his books, methods that are tried and true through studies and through research, and that's what I bring to your audience. Are there things that are scientifically proven to work to enable success in our lives and in our businesses. But what do I mean by proven? That you can point to Harvard studies, MIT studies, Stanford study, tier one organizational studies that have been done over many decades that conclusively prove that if you do this, your chances of success are greater. In my pocket or my briefcase, I always carry the particular goal pyramid that I'm currently working on. And on airplanes, spare moments, waiting in the lobby somewhere. I'll look at this and I know that to get to the top, all I gotta do is work on these things at the bottom, which I make notes, I work on, those become my weekly tasks and it keeps me moving up. You know what I'm doing? This isn't, this isn't voodoo, this isn't mysticism, this is mental focus. Matthew is one of the most motivating and inspirational people I've ever met. Now usually the trouble with people like that is they make you feel good, but leave you with nothing at the end of the day. The thing with Matthew is he's all about goal setting, all about actions, and all about getting things done. 
What I like the most about being on stage, I look at the audience, I look at the individual people in the audience and I see that I've got their total attention. It's absolutely captive, they're listening to every word I say and it's my opportunity to give them something to make their situation better in their job and career, in their business, how to better their business, in their personal life, what they can do to change some aspect of it and I see them looking up at me and I'm looking down at them and our eyes meet and I know that at that moment I'm influencing them and that's the best feeling in the world. Oh, I, I think he wants to, he gives me the energy that I want to take my business to the next level. That, that every day that what I thought was the ceiling is no longer the ceiling and it's this unlimited potential out there. He's got the energy and the drive and the style that makes you really want to jump up and say right I'm going to get out and get it. Talk to me about goals in the form of numbers. I want foot traffic to go up by 13% over the next 12 months. That's a goal. I want my margin to increase from 14.5% to 17.8% in the next 9 to 12 months. That's a goal. I want to become competitive in this product segment against my competition within these price ranges over this period of time. That's a goal. It's precise. It's something concrete. It's something definitive. Well, I've just circulated around and spoken to some of the guests here at today's breakfast and people were just amazed at the level of clarity, the level of uh, articulation, the way he's able to just convey his thoughts and leave people with a sense of inspiration about the next steps. Some of the key issues we're already recognising in universities about teaching students about how to do business. What are you trying to achieve? What outcomes are you looking for from this particular event? How will you measure success? And every engagement, every opportunity that I have to speak, I'm always looking at the outcome from your perspective, your audience's perspective. It's your job as a manager, as a CEO, as a business owner, to make your employees care. It's your job, period. All you have to do, and it's not rocket science, is have clarity about goals, align them to desire, create an environment or be an environment conducive to achieving those goals, invest in yourself and your staff in the knowledge required to achieve it, and then act.